Hey, this is Dylan here from Adon Days Training. Uh, check out our Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash Adon Days Training. Email me at Adon Days Training at gmail.com. In order to get um, better athletically and stronger and healthier. Um, I'm just doing a quick blog post. I got a question yesterday uh, by a guy named Josh. He was wondering... Um, what is the difference between what I, what current NFL, college football players do as opposed to what I think they should be doing? This is a pretty in-depth question. Um, lots of different factors that go into it. Uh, factor number one, I would say, definitely depends on the level of athlete. Like a pro athlete as opposed to a college fresh, freshman, definitely going to be doing different stuff. Um, for pro athletes, since they're obviously already very uh, talented genetically, if they... So, you know, let's say they're they're already obviously pretty strong naturally or whatever they've been doing. I mean, they're a good athlete, point blank, period. So they're a good athlete. So I don't want to really do too much different with them other than uh, keep them healthy, see what they're, um, like, why they have certain injuries or what on their body needs to be addressed in order to make them healthier and keep them on the field because that's really the most important thing is keeping athletes on the field. Um, especially like at a pro level, they obviously are pretty athletic. So I'm not going to be taking them and having them do all kinds of crazy stuff they've never done. Um, just basic strength training, lots of prehab and rehab. Um, <clears throat> I'd probably change up how they condition um, for their sport. One thing, uh, and also like I wouldn't have them do power cleans. I think I, I put up a status yesterday about how you know uh, Buddy Morris said something about how you know if all the great football players do Olympic lifts, why don't all Olympic lifters play football and like that's a very good point because who would want to play who would want to be an olympic lifter over a pro football player because pro football you know you get a lot more money people i mean a lot of different things like most people want to be football players not weightlifters um so if they could they probably would um so one thing that i like to do instead of um olympic lifts is throw medicine balls and this is because um first off it's much easier to get injured doing an olympic lift um you can injure a lot of different parts in your body. They're pretty complex. I mean, it's a sport. It's a whole different sport. Or throwing a medicine ball, not too hard to, to mess up. You just, or not too hard not to mess up. You just throw the ball, and you can let go of the ball. So instead of having, you know, catching the weight at the top, you kind of got to slow down the acceleration. If you're throwing the ball, that recruits the utmost power output because you're letting go of the ball. Um, so that's what I would do instead. So instead of, like, um, Olympic lifts, I do basic box jumps, um, vertical jumps, broad jumps, medicine ball throws, all there's a ton of different kinds, um, sprints, and uh, so that kind of leads me to, obviously most people don't really know how to train for sports, um, for college athletes, um, you're going to want to, you know, teach them so much that goes into it, teach them proper, like, ways to do things, a lot of them all they do is bench and curls, they don't even really know how to improve a lot of other areas, I think that all aspects of football, all levels could use more body weight training because everyone just overlooks body weight training when really most of us aren't strong enough with our body weight really like like I feel like I still have so much more I'm doing a body weight phase right now and I still have so much more I can improve on with my body weight yeah I'm like oh I'm so strong but like I can still get so much better just using my body weight like people overlook that so much um so I think before you have a kid squatting a bar you should have them learn how to squat properly without the bar um lots of just going back and uh, doing simple motor patterns that we should have down that we don't. Um, so I guess with strength, I mean, there's so many different ways to get stronger that it's not really that hard. Just keep getting them stronger. Put weight on the bar. Um, that's you know, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. But I'd say implement more body weight training. Um, I guess what I'm going to go into my main thing is condition for football. Um, and one thing I have this speed DVD manual, which is awesome. It's by Joe DeFranco, Mike Godango and James Smith, and basically it just shows how to train for speed for non-track athletes. Um, one thing that's really interesting that I just kind of didn't really know too much about until I guess when I got the books, but there's three different energy systems. There's um, <clears throat> aerobic, which is like, you know, everyone knows what aerobic is. It's like just your heart and blah, blah, blah. Aerobic capacity. Then there is also a lactic capacity, which is basically explosive bouts um, of exercise that's under 10 seconds. And then there is um, lactic anaerobic, which basically is pointless. All the um, tests that you do for condition tests for combat, or not for combats, but for like training camp, they're like, oh, run the 300 yard shuttle or do two gassers or run one tens 20 times. It's not, it might show that you're in shape, but it doesn't do anything to show that you're in shape for football.
for football, you want to do be, be doing training the aliatic uh, system, basically because all these are under 10 seconds, and it's using your explosiveness, not like it's not putting your body in an elastic state. Most football plays last like I think it's like 3.28 seconds or something goofy like that. So why would you run? Why would you run 400, 300 yards at one time? It's stupid. And the people that are trying to train for speed, another common huge misconception is they're always trying to run like a ton of stuff. They do quality or quantity over quality all the time. I think if I do more of it, I'll get better at it. Not the case, not the case, not the case. It's tough for me to even do it. I'm like, oh, I got one more. But it really, if my body doesn't feel like I should do one more, I should stop because it's counteractive. Um, one that's really interesting, so, let's see, I'm going to get to this part in the book here, but they say something about, so basically what I've been doing lately, I actually am doing a progression out of the book, it's called, um, a lactic capacity, um, lactic capacity training, basically, I guess, um, so basically, what you do is you just have a basic progression, like, you start off with falling, basically it's three week phases, and you increase the, um, the distance, or you increase the volume of sprints each week, and then you also increase the rest period with the further you go, because more distance, more rest you need to stay explosive, so you start off with falling sprints for three weeks, then you go to flying sprints of 20 yards, flying sprints of 30 yards, and uh, med ball push-up starts, so... Basically, it progresses, progresses the more difficult exercises. Um, by training in this way, you not only increase, um, basically what you're trying to do is, you know that someone runs like a 4-4 for their max speed. Um, they're not always going to run a 4-4. Their operational output, which is basically, their, like, t let's say you took an average of like 10 40s, they might run like a 4-8 or something. So that's their operational output. So that means that, they might run a 4-4 their first time, but after a while they're going to run a 4-8. So if you uh, train through this elastic capacity type of training, uh, you, you can get your 40 down to a 4-7, or 4-3, then probably your operational output is going to be down to 4-7. So you're still increasing your max speed, but also you're, by increasing your max speed, you're improving the speed at which you can run the 40 at over time. So... Um, that's one thing. So basically, you want to train in your conditioning, your speed training, like what the sport would be. You don't want to be running 60-yard sprints all day when your sport might only require you to run 20. Focus on what your sport requires and do that. That's the main thing. So for football, you stick to, I mean, for this um, current program I'm doing, the farthest I run is 30 yards for a sprint. Um, and that's like that's really all you need. That's gonna build me up for what a football player would do. Um, one thing that's interesting is so it talks about why you should not do lactic work, which is like 300 yard shuttle, gassers, stuff like that. And what it basically says, oh, so basically, for the development of speed, we do not recommend training in a lactic state. It is too low intensity to enhance speed, and it's too high, high intensity to enhance aerobic. Capacity. So basically, they're saying it's too high intensity to really like make it benefit for you to um, to increase your like aerobic, how much you can breathe. That's where tempo runs come in, which I'll talk about those in different a different post. Um, but it's too low intensity to enhance speed. So because you're not resting enough, your body is not at 100. percent So you can't really train your body to run faster if you're not fully recovered for each sprint. So that's one thing. Um, that's really important is making sure that you're fully recovered. And you, I mean, you have to, if you have to take sprinting is one of the most high activity stressors on the body. Uh, it really stresses the CNS, which is the central nervous system. People don't realize that. They just think you can keep running them, but really it's going to make you slower, weaker, and probably hurt you. Less is always better. If you feel like you need more rest to perform the movement more explosively, then take more rest. Um, people always think more is better. It's not. Uh, that's where I'd say most coaches... Uh, don't know what they're doing. Um, a lot of the time, also, the coaches will be like, oh, yeah, they just have them do the same thing they did in high school, the same thing they did in college with no why to why they're doing it, and just do it to do it, which is one of the dumbest things you can ever do. Another thing that sucks about college sports like football or a sport like football is that you have so many guys that it's really tough to individualize the program. So if I could fix something about the way um, college sports are, high school sports, I would say to have either different training blocks of, like, 10 guys at a time. I'd even say like five guys at a time. So you'd have to have like 20 different groups of five people to really maximize 
everything to get the best out of that individual person. Unfortunately, these coaches have like maybe a couple of hours a day with them to make them better, and it's really just with a hundred guy. Let's say you have the whole team in there at once, or like the offense in there at fifty, the defense fifty. You don't have time to go down and talk to Jimmy about why he has bad knees. Where that's where when you have somebody more individualized, like a personal trainer. You can really get down to what the root of the problem is and how they can fix that to make the athlete a better, better athlete, have less pain. Um, there's just no time for that with the way that the sports systems are set up. So, and you can't really control what athletes are doing on the other 20 some hours that you're not with them. Um, so, it's pretty tough in that regard. But you just have to try to do the best that you can to make sure you individualize it with them, meet with them a couple times a week or at least once a week just to talk about how things are going, have like an individual assessment on each one. I don't know. It'd be, it'd be It's tough for those guys. Like I understand, but some of the college coaches and high school coaches just suck. But um, a lot of them also just, they just have too many guys. So they just need to try to figure out the best program they can. Um, anyways, that's kind of what I think about that is less Olympic lifts. Do things that are going to, be the easiest way to benefit your athlete without hurting them. So don't do something complex if it's not really the best and simplest way to get that. Whatever's the easiest way to get results, do that without like injury. And like if you see some cool exercise, it doesn't mean that you have to do that to get the results. Um, also, just focus on prehab and rehab more. Like if I'd have done mobility drills when I was in college. I'd had so much less pain than I had at that point in time, and I was all like, "Oh, it's because of squatting." Like, I don't, you don't know, you know? How do you know? Never did mobility drills before, never foam roll before. So there's a lot of different things that uh, I would say that they do wrong. But um, other than that, hopefully, you learned something. That's my thoughts on it. Peace. Come check us out at uh, downhistraining.com and hit me up for a free trial session. All right. Bye bye.